to the Tarot Cottage. My name is Amy. I'm back today with a pick a card reading for you. Um, welcome to my beautiful returning subscribers and thank you guys so much for all of your beautiful comments below my readings this month. A big congratulations to this week's winner and be sure to drop your comment below for your chance to win as well and be sure to check your notification bells um, if you have dropped comments below my readings this month because I'm waiting back to hear from one, one of my most recent winners so be sure to check your notifications as well. And if you have stumbled across the channel for the very first time, I do pick a card readings on this channel. I try to release a couple of times a week in the very least at least three or four times a week um so keep checking back um, and we'd love to have you join us here as a part of our beautiful soul family so please subscribe if you feel confident to or feel perhaps drawn to if you like this reading um hit your notification bell your like button it helps me to bring you guys more content and we would just also love to have your presence here on this channel um i also offer a chance to win a free reading for all of my subscribers you just have to drop your comment below any of my readings this month um for your chance to win uh, an emoji anything like that be sure to hit your notification bell though so that if you are chosen the winner i can get the ball rolling i can contact you via the comment section and we can get the ball rolling um but today's topic is all about someone on your mind what do they wish that they could say to you but they can't for whatever reason maybe it's a no contact maybe there's just a situation where they just can't feel like they can come forward with their truth but what does the person on your mind wish that they could tell you but they just can't get off of their chest we have three piles to choose from today pile number one with the page of wands and the purple flower pile number two with the six of cups and the yellow flower and pile number three with the hermit and the pink flower. So whichever pile or piles are calling out to you, there may be a message waiting. And I'm gonna jump into pile number one. Again, today's topic is all about the person on your mind and what they wish that they could say to you, what they wish that you knew, but they can't tell you for some reason. Pile one. Hello, pile number one. You were drawn to the purple flower or to the page of wands and this is your reading. The person on your mind, what do they wish that they could say to you? What are they dying to say to you but they can't for some reason? Now the page of wands is all relative to passion, to ex to exploration, somebody who is very curious about you. So maybe this connection never really broke the surface. Maybe the two of you didn't really fall into a, a a full-fledged relationship but there's still a lot of curiosity that brews and there's still this desire to explore that you're even drawn to the purple flower which I feel like is in really relative to your card choice as well because there's the color purple for me is all about expansion um, it's all about sort of going from one level to the next level and so this page of wands wants to take it to another level and they wish that they could say that to you but let's see what else they want to express I'm going to use the relative tarot for you for the beginning of your reading what does the person on pile number one's mind wish that they could say but cannot say to pile number one? We have the lovers coming in the reversal. And you'll notice that this particular deck has different versions of the lovers. There's multiple versions, actually. This one happens to have two divine masculine energies associated with it, so that could um, resonate with you in some way. It doesn't have to, of course. The lovers as, a, as an overarching theme is this person's way of saying that they wish they should have made better decisions when it came to you. Um, they wish that they could say that, that they are regretting some of the decisions that they did make in the past. And they were very curious about you in the past as well. But I feel like they were afraid to say something. Maybe they chose somebody different, but they are just really disappointed in the choices that they made when it came to you. And now they want to reveal some of their truth that they perhaps didn't have a chance to reveal. Now for some, this could be a work connection because I'm focused on that ladder. But there's about ascension steps. So this could have been someone that you came of age with, somebody that you grew up with a little bit, um, because there's an aspect of them learning and growing and, and realizing their mistakes when it comes to you. They really wanna bring to light their true feelings. And they're calling you your they are calling you their contemporary. So they're saying that the two of you worked together, you went to school together, you were friends perhaps. We have the ace of wands. And they also want to say what they're afraid to, to say is that they they don't know how to make change and that spark hasn't gone anywhere. It's sprouted legs almost, I just heard. It's sprouted things. On the floor is the Nine of Wands in the reversal. 
And I feel like they want to get something off of their chest. It's like the weight of the world has been on them. And this revelation that they wanted to bring to the surface has been on their shoulders too. And they just want to get it off their chest. They're like, I just want to say how I feel. Because if I say how I feel, I'll feel better. Because they're really frustrated with themselves and they want to highlight that, that they're not blaming you, that they're blaming themselves for the state of your connection at this time. And even again, even if the state is not a lot going on, they're blaming themselves for that. Even if you notice the Page of Wands here is holding onto an artist palette. So they are taking sort of accountability for um, the lack of movement in your connection. We have the Ace of Cups and the King of Pentacles. And they want you to know as well that they've learned, they've grown, um, and they wouldn't they wouldn't ruin a second chance with you. They're really focused on sort of new opportunities, new possibilities. Not that they're expecting it. They're not trying to put the emphasis on the expectation, but they are trying to put the emphasis on the hope. It's like in a perfect world, maybe you feel the same way. In a perfect world, maybe we'd have a shot again and we could kind of go back to the drawing board and try again. Or try for the very first time because it does feel like a very innocent innocent connection that wants to move out of the innocent realm we have the knight of cups and we have the knight of pentacles here as the back of deck and they are speaking truly about how they tried to give you hints and clues in the past about how they felt they tried to maybe be really generous with compliments or maybe generous with gifts or generous with their time but it just wasn't enough they took too long to make their move and now they're really suffering for it. Or they, and I don't want to say suffering. They're not trying to denote a lot of anxiety or worry. But they are. They have been holding on to this spark for a long time. Perhaps a little bit too long in their opinion. And now they're just saying it's starting to become heavy. It's, star it's starting to become a weight. And I'd like to take this weight off of my shoulders. I'd like to tell you how I feel. We have the Five of Swords. Strategy and Resilience. And they also want to say that they did have a plan in the past. It's like they're trying to put a band-aid on things. It's like I did have a plan in the past. I wasn't blind to all of the signs. I saw them, but I was trying to protect myself. They also don't want to infringe on anything that you have going on right now. They don't want to create havoc for you. They don't want to create complications for you. That's why they're very focused on just revelation with no expectation of return. In a perfect world, they said that yes, they they would be able to, and be willing to have a new emotional start with you, but they're not holding on to that concept yet, or at this time. They still very much care about how you how you feel about them or what what your opinion is of them, and I feel like that's part of the frustrations with themselves is that is that they care so much about what you think. We have the three of cups. This could have been a friendship. And they're saying that you're so different. You know, you were such a different friend to them. You weren't just the regular run of the meal mill friend. You set yourself apart in your friend group. And they had so much fun with you too in the past. Here, look at the sun. They're both celebrating. They both have champagne. There's this aspect about having fun together. And they reminisce a lot about those times as well. We have the High Priestess with the Chariot. And in this moment, the High Priestess is really speaking about looking beyond the immediate appearances of things. That even if there has been no contact, it doesn't mean that you haven't been on their mind. Um, they would like to be able to have some sort of movement. But they are understanding that there could be obstacles. So one of the reasons why they're holding back could be because you're in another connection. Or maybe there's another connection that they have just entered into or are a part of. Um, that doesn't have to be the case, but please take that as it resonates because that message is coming through. But they say you have to look beyond the immediate appearances of things still in the present moment to see their truth. Because this ace of wands, it's still ignited, it still exists, but they have to perhaps keep it, keep it suppressed a little bit, being pulled in different directions for someone watching. But this rhino says that we can plow through those, those difficulties. And there is also this admission of like, you know what, if you were willing to fuel this spark with me, maybe I could create solutions here. Maybe I could have some solutions here because all is not what it seems. And they've had this huge epiphany when it comes to you. Here with the awakening, you can see it's a peacock and the peacock, you know, is very extravagant. The peacock will flare its beautiful colors um, as a way to impress. And so there's this feeling about not feeling good enough 
and that's why perhaps they didn't express themselves. It's like they didn't think that they were good enough or good looking enough. I feel like there's an emphasis on their attraction. They were really vulnerable about what they looked like or how you would perceive them in some way. And that was one of the reasons why they held back their truth in the past. And that could even be a, a lingering energy. They still maintain that feeling. They still focus a lot on physical things. And, and they still focus on, for instance, if they have a self-esteem issue, if they have um, one part of their body that they really hate, they probably still hate that part. And so that makes them feel insecure as well. We have the Knight of Pentacles, endurance and determination. And they do want you to know that even if it's been years, and for someone it feels like it, the separation here or the disconnect could be years, even if it has been years, they have evolved from the page to the knight to the king at this point. And there, it still endures. The spark still endures. It's like the longest lasting match of all time. And this knight of pentacles endures with this, this camel energy. There's thirst there. We started with the page of wands, which is this fiery element, which draws out our thirst. And they... Um, they, they're like, I have no intention of putting down the wands. Even though I know I should, even though I know I should, I feel like I have to hand them to you. I feel like I have to give them to you. And I owe you almost an explanation or I owe you the truth. Back of the deck is the Eight of Cups for the Two of Pentacles. And they're really saying that all of these proclamations, they feel like it, they have to come out to offer themselves a purge or some peace. Even the dove is coming down with the communion of peace. And so they feel like it's almost important to express this to you at this time so that they can start the healing process so that they don't have to feel the weight of that anymore. It's like, I just need to get it off my chest so that you know. And they may see it as closure, but Spirit says it might actually be something that they still carry with them beyond that point because they've been carrying your energy here, just like the kangaroo carrying its little baby. They've been carrying this imbalance or this woulda, coulda, shoulda energy surrounding your connection for a really long time. At least a couple of years, Spirit says. At least a couple of years in this case. What do they wish they could say but can't at this moment, please? We have here, find your night self, number 21. And they're emphasizing, um, you can see that this little character is turning his way, his self away from the wisdom of the owl. It's like I turned my... my gaze away from the truth and I left things up in the air I left a cycle of unfinished business because I felt like it was too risky to reveal myself to you it says hope is like a hummingbird and they're still hopeful that again they don't want to give up that hope part of them is like I need to release this because I need to surrender I need to heal I need to let go of this expectation or of this flame that I've been holding for such a long time and the other half of them is saying but if there was clearance, if there was no obstacles, if we got a second chance, I would be able to change directions and it would be, make me very happy. It would make me filled with joy. Um, they're staring up at that hummingbird, which can bridge a gap very, very quickly. Back of the deck says your truth is powerful, number 12. And there, we're talking about the truth today. We're talking about what lays hidden and their truth coming forward to the surface and how they want to surrender to it. Maybe they've been running from it. But now they're facing that stag. They're facing their strength in order to execute the change. And that's what they really want. They want to express themselves. Finally is what I hear. They finally want to express themselves. What do they wish that they could say at this moment but can't, please? The oyster solitary loneliness that they were making plans. And they're also saying that I was, I'm was really shy. I'm a shy person and I was afraid to express myself and be myself. It's like they're afraid to be themselves. But you gave them you gave them this feeling of warmth. Like you gave them the sense that it was safe to be themselves around you. And yet they still held back. So they feel like they failed. We have the gazelle like a deer in the headlights. And if we just saw the deer, which is a symbol of strength, the gazelle is a type of deer as well. But it's more, it's lighter. It's more graceful. And it skips away at the first sign of danger but they have endured with that flame. There is the page, there is the wand. And it's like, I'm worse for the wear. I've lost a tusk, but I'm enduring. There's also an aspect of past life connection here coming through with this person as well. Let's get a couple of message cards to see where their thoughts are. What do they wish they could say, please, but they can't, they can't get off of their chest. For pile number one. You are my secret wish. A 
and you are the only thing that I lie about. And you're all grown up now. And I feel like they're all grown up now too. I feel like you'd be surprised of how they've evolved physically. I feel like they're really hard on them on themselves needlessly. I just heard they don't, I, that song, she don't know she's beautiful. I feel great except when I don't. That's the emperor energy. Surrender, I've given in, I've given up. And that's the Ten of Swords. So they are speaking about surrendering or, or really fixating on you, hoping for you. I am scared to be vulnerable with, vulnerable with you even today. I want adventure with you. I'm coming. Now, there is an emphasis here on wanting to, to express something, wanting to take action. But I feel like they're really taking their time. I do fantasize still about being with you. And my nights are long and they're filled with you. The back of the deck says, I will never stop hoping for us. I feel like it's a, it's a very strong almost habit that they've created in hoping for you as well. Let's pull out a few more message cards here from the Hermit Tarot. What do they wish that they could say but they cannot express, please? We have the Fool, I'm ready. And if I asked you to stay, would you leave? It's almost like they're requesting it. If, if I had taken a chance, if I took a chance now, would you leave behind anything that is holding you back? Like if I took the leap, would you take the leap? And in the past, if I had le left, would you have left with me? It's like they want to know what your perspective was in the past and they want to know what your perspective is today. Do you even see me that way? Is this all one-sided? That was one of the reasons they perhaps held back was because of that conflict that the ego was infusing at them of like, this isn't safe. You're going to, you're going to get rejected or it's going to blow up in your face. I want you to be the one that chooses. They don't want to have to face <laughs> that ego or that conflict or the vulnerability that's necessary. It's like, I want to give you the choice. It's like I'm in so much pain. Back of the deck says there is someone else and we have this love scares me. That's the justice 11. So this could be the issue with position and that could be one of the reasons why they feel like they have to hold back. Perhaps that someone else is on your end or it could be on their end as well. So please take that as it resonates. <clears throat> what do they wish they could say to Pau one, please? Attraction. First of all, they're t that's exactly where we started <laughs> and that's where we're stopping. Here at the Page of Wands and Attraction, you attract more romantic love by enjoying this moment fully, by taking advantage of the present moment so that they don't have to suffer the way that they've suffered because they missed their opportunity with you. And soulmate, yes, this is your soulmate. So they feel so connected to you. And this spark, again, they've only been able to conceptualize or to pontificate upon where where it came from, what its purpose serves in your, your connection and in, the, in their lives. And they have associated it with really strong um, spiritual connection. Back of the deck says, very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. And they're still trying to manifest more. They're still trying to manifest connection with you, or in the very least, clarity. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number one. What do they want to say to pile number one in the bowl, please? What do they want to say to pile number one? With the tiny tarot, we have the five of cups reverse. It's like they want to ask for forgiveness or something. It's like they want they want a fair fight or they want forgiveness. They want to tell you that they're sorry they didn't take action. Um, and that, that pressure to say something to you has just been building and building and building. But they let their emotions control them and not the other way around. In the bowl today, we have the Golden Girls. When I think of the Golden Girls, it's one of my favorite shows. I really love it. But it's, um, a st and I'm sure everybody knows about it, but it, if you don't, it's a sitcom about four little old ladies that live together. Um, and they're all single and they're all kind of navigating the dating world in their, you know, late years of life. And so there's, there's talking about wisdom codes that come in with the passage of time. So your person has gained wisdom about this connection and about you. We have the Sun Ruin. So clarity, awareness, that's what they want to reveal to you is their truth. We have heart reversed, the sun and the star reversed. Now, Leo energy, Aquarius energy, the letter R and the pearl of wisdom. Now, the heart chakra is reversed because they didn't express it. And that's what they want to do. They want to reveal their truth, but they also are trying to communicate that they don't hold a lot of hope, um, perhaps, or their hope is waning. 
because you feel far away. And there's the fairy, something that we wish upon um, or something that we don't know if it is true or not. So they don't know if it's one-sided or if, it's, if you felt the same way about them as well. Pile number one, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates. If it does, drop your comment below for a chance to win a reading with me. Be sure to hit your notification bell if you do so, so that I can notify you if you are chosen. You can also check out my link for Etsy for personal reading, and that is below. But I hope that you come back here and visit me at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope you have a great day. Hello, pile number two. You are drawn to the yellow flower and to the six of cups, and this is your reading. Um, the person on your mind, what do they wish that they could sell you? say to you or tell you but they just can't um the six of cups here is all about friendship and connection and nostalgia this uh, this is somebody who cares very deeply about you and you may have grown up with them and they may have been a very close personal friend of yours um in the path as well or in the past they do wish for reunions with you and you can see that this little boy is, is pinning something to her shirt or handing her a flower. And there's an aspect of generosity with the Six of Cups. It's like it's a requirement or a request from Spirit for us to be generous with each other. Um, and so perhaps they didn't feel like they were generous enough with you um, in revealing how they feel. But they just felt something in this connection and they wanted to express that. So let's take a look here. What do they wish that they could say to you? but just can't in this moment. The Four of Swords. And the truth is, is that they really want to speak to you because the reality stings a little bit. I feel like there's this feeling about being keeping themselves out of a, a really positive experience. And that stings them too. And there could be um, a lot of practical obstacles in the way in the present moment and that's why they they have to maintain their 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 truth we have the five of cups and they have deep deep regrets when it comes to you and they really want to express that like deep regrets <clears throat> and there's nothing they can, can do about it because it's in the past the page of swords and they just said i learned my lesson I've learned my lesson. You could have gone to school with this person. And the Page of Swords is supposed to charge forward with truth, with information, with clarity. And they're really regretful that they didn't do that. And they've learned their lesson. Oh my goodness, there's such a, a heart space surrounding, surrounding helplessness in this moment and feeling like they gave you the impression that they were ignoring you or giving you, you the impression that they didn't care. They also may have felt ignored by you as well. Um, and that could have be the reason why they sort of reacted in the same way by, by pulling, pulling backward in your connection. But they feel helpless with what has happened or what has not happened rather in this connection perhaps. <clears throat> because you're, you were worth the steps that they were supposed to take. And they want to emphasize that to you because they do not want to leave you feeling the way that they feel. Because they feel like they had a shining opportunity with you and you may have even given them that opportunity, perhaps perhaps for a very deep seated connection, but I feel like they didn't reach out and take it or they didn't take it in time. And they gave you the impression that, that they were overlooking you. Maybe they chose somebody else or maybe they were just too passive or too back and forth when it comes to giving you a true, true offer. But here's the Ace of Cups. And the truth is, is that they really, really care about you. Like they're even, they're speaking about love. They're speaking about overflowing that love. Um, we have the nine of cups. And there is such a strong spiritual connection here that they feel with you that they kept hidden too. It's like they, maybe they didn't have the language or they were ill-equipped to be able to express themselves in the past, but they're really regretful now of not seeing it, not expressing something to you. The six of swords here is about a transition into clarity and wanting to arrive there with you in the in the very least to a state of peace because they still have wishful thinking associated with you and I almost feel like it was a huge crush situation to them it felt like they were crushing really hard on you and it felt one-sided perhaps it's like they were crushing so hard on you and yet they may not have given you that impression through their actions they feel like they didn't give you that impression there's even an emphasis still on the nine of cups with the five and the four, but it's been separated by reality. 
So it's like I still want to maintain this hope, but the reality tells me that maybe that's not likely or maybe um, that's an impossibility because of the reality of the 3D situation that sits in the present day. <clears throat> And the truth is, is that I feel like it was very two-sided. I'm just focused on those two keys and I feel like you felt the exact same way. This person felt a deep sense of connection with you as well. And I feel like their circumstances and reality today is what impedes them from telling you the truth in this moment. The Four of Wands. I just heard that Demi Lovato quote from her song that you were my ember and now they're my shade of gold. <laughs> if they were to come towards you in this moment, they are speaking about issues within their home or issues within conflicts that could arise. And there's the five of swords again with the two of wands, but they dream about that traumatic return. They dream about being able to, in the very least, apologize for something, maybe even to apologize for specific conflicts between the two of you. Um, times when they prioritized their own safety instead of prioritizing your feelings, times when they weren't as generous with you emotionally as they should have been, um, especially in relation to others. So there could have been moments in your friendship and your connection in the past where they kind of threw you under the bus sometimes or overlooked you or overlooked your feelings to prioritize their ego in that moment. <clears throat> And they're also really talking a lot about flirtation cycles between the two of you and how that was kind of fixed with a bit of conflict too because there was a lot of back and forth flirtation. Um, and sometimes that frustrated them and they want to speak about that, about the past and how sometimes they felt like they were chasing you around and that's when they perhaps pulled back and gave you the impression that they didn't care or chose other people or they just felt like they were chasing you around. And so they started, they didn't want to see this as a, like a crutch or that it was all one-sided and they were just chasing you and you weren't interested because they felt like it was a very personal, individual journey. They didn't feel like you were experiencing the same thing as them. And that's just a perception based on their truth. That's not the reality, but that's what they're thinking. That like, I was alone in this connection or I was alone in these feelings. When again, I feel like they weren't, because they were using that, that truth as their crutch in that moment, they weren't aware that you were in the same boat, that you were feeling the same way. But I feel like they think that you were on different pages at the different at different times. It's like you were on the you were when they were ready for a relationship, you weren't. When you were ready for a relationship, they weren't. <clears throat> and now the obstacles have shifted and they're really concerned about practical losses or about creating practical loss for you. So the obstacles make it feel really helpless. Um, they've packed those obstacles up. They aren't, they aren't completely immovable. We can move some of those obstacles out of the way if we're really, really determined to, but we may have to face some practical losses. And that could be why they are maintaining this truth in a, in a sense of secrecy. And that's why they feel like they can't say these things to you because they still want to fuel that curiosity. This is secondary. They're saying it's not just attraction. This is connection. This is not just fire and curiosity. This is connection. This is somebody who cares deeply about you first. That's why it complicates things so much. If it was just any other person, if it was just fire, then there wouldn't have been, been as many stakes. But the stakes were higher because of that emotional heart space. But that fire is still there. <laughs> that curiosity, that thirst, still there. They just feel like there's a lot of obstacles to overcome. And they're watching you, Spirit says. They are keeping a tab on you. They are watching you in this moment. And that's fueling the desire that still exists. That's fueling this crush energy. I feel like they're still crushing on you. Even if there's been a disconnect here, even if there's been a period of time where the two of you haven't seen each other, I feel like they are still crushing hard on you at this time as well. We have here a time to rest a while, number 19. And there's this big crescent moon with this little hobo sack and we have the, the winter scene in behind. And there's this em emphasis on clarity 
and wanting to bring my truth to the surface because I think of the high priestess with the crescent moon and I think about the wisdom codes and sitting on information we know to be true but not doing anything about it in this moment even though they're curious and there could be momentum in the future if they keep this momentum going of curiosity of desire but it would take a big leap of faith you have here your inner light will guide you number 15 and the 15 is attachment that this person is still feeling for you and there's those little mushrooms at the bottom i always think of like psychedelic psychedelic mushrooms with those little I don't even know what they're called. They're the mushrooms in Mario as well. Um, and there's the psychedelic energy surrounding them. And so there's this feeling about intoxication, kind of being addicted to the connection in some way or having it have a hold on me that feels a little bit limiting in this moment. And then we have time to move on on the back of the deck, number 22. And there's this feeling about growth and needing to gain closure, needing to gain clarity about your feelings and thinking that they need access to you in order to do that. But the truth is, is that it doesn't feel like closure to me. It feels like they would come forward and then maybe it would complicate things for you or complicate things for them. And that's where the helplessness comes in and where the obstacles are really paramount. We have owl wisdom codes. Somebody who has gained awareness and knowledge because of this connection perhaps spiritual knowledge and sea serpent back of the deck is the lamb and I always think about sort of a lost lamb um, and the 99 that are left behind and it's like one it's like you set yourself apart you are the lost lamb and because you set yourself apart um, they can't let go of that idea of finding that lost lamb this sea serpent here it looks like it's devouring itself so it's like the two of you have perhaps have been in a bit of a karmic loop perhaps in the past of this connection, but maybe even in past lifetimes as well, but a bit of a karmic loop. It's like chasing each other around, but not quite ever getting anywhere. I'm gonna use the Cottage Divine Musk and Oracle for you. What do they wish that they could say, please, that cannot in this moment? Past life connection. And I definitely want to see you again. And that was the exact emphasis of your first card, the Six of Cups. Emphasizing reunions, and that's one of their greatest wishes, is to emphasize reunions. But they're losing hope here. And they're losing hope because they're fueling that belief with the loss, reflecting a lot about the past, reflecting upon the loss of you. It doesn't infuse a lot of abundant mindsets when we're focused on loss. I am afraid of rejection, and they always were. Afraid that you don't feel the same way. Afraid that it wasn't mutual. And I worry that this is all in my head. Back of the deck says, I can't make the first move towards you. I'm helpless. There's too many obstacles. But that just becomes their truth because they're fueling that truth. What do they wish that they could say but cannot to pile number two, please? <clears throat> is it possible for us to start over? And that's the, the Ace of Cups. That was very similar to pile number one. Very sort of different dynamic in the reading and in the energies, but um, Ace of Cups at the end of the reading. Wanting a new hope, wanting a new per perspective or new possibility. I pretend I don't care, but I do. And they may have treated you like that in the past. They may be treating you like that in the 3D in this moment. But I'm stuck right now. But I've definitely had a wake-up call when it comes to you. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't know what you do to me. We also have that smile, though. So you could have had a very enigmatic smile. Dimples, perhaps. And this hermit, they could have been a Virgo energy. Strong earth element with this person. But they're very contemplative. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure myself out. And we also have here, I miss you terribly. Do you miss me too? And they do. They're very nostalgic when it comes to you. They know what they want. Maybe they didn't communicate that clearly to you in the past, but they are saying that they know what they want now. What do they wish that they could say, please? 
They wish that they could have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and honestly discuss their feelings with you in this moment. So love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. And that could have been what held them back in the past was a lack of that, a lack of self-love, a lack of confidence, a lack of the assurance that you were going to feel the same or that you weren't going to leave them sort of hanging in that energy of rejection because they were afraid of that rejection. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number two. And I feel like you were drawn to the yellow for a reason, perhaps because of the fear factor here. I just heard yellow belt, so I don't know if karate has anything to do, so please take that as it, as it resonates. We have the three of swords, we have the page of wands, and we do have the eight of wands in the reverse position. Now, the eight of wands is the frustrating delay that has accompanied this message. It's like this message should have come years ago perhaps a long long time ago there's the page of wands the curiosity and the thirst but i there's the disappointment here the three of the three of swords could be a disappointment loss temporary issues perhaps with third party just their sadness overall that there have been so many frustrating delays we have the letter r and f we also have hug and we have the eight, I'm sorry, the six of cups. You were drawn to the six of cups. We do have a chain. People are attached here perhaps to the practical realm, but also the chain of events that could affect our lives if we were to come forward. We have Cupid's arrow and we have baby shark. So being aggressive, we do have the crescent moon. So somebody who's kept their feelings hidden perhaps because of children. We have made with love. And again, the six of cups um, does focus on childhood. So you may have experienced childhood with a childhood with this person, or they may have children now. You may have children. We have Leo energy, and we have a little flower. I think of forget-me-nots. Pile two, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates. If it does, please drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. Be sure to hit your notification bell if you do so, so that I can notify you if you're chosen. Um, and you can check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading if you feel called to. But I hope that you have a beautiful day, and I hope that you come back and visit me at the Tarot Cottage. Hello, pile number one, you are drawn to the pink flower, whoops, or to the hermit energy, and this is your reading. The person on your mind, what do they wish they could say to you right this moment, but they can't for whatever reason, for whatever attachment energies. Um, we do have the hermit, and so I think of Virgo energy, and this is a very contemplative card, somebody who has drawn inward, somebody who thinks about you often, someone who perhaps knows exactly what they want to say because they've thought about it over and over and over again. Um, there's a lot of focus here on this flame. It's like they're trying to protect that candle from going out. And all of their reflection is like this assurance of stopping that candle from going out because they won't let it go out because their thoughts are persistent. There's also a lot of loneliness sometimes associated with the hermit. If we think about somebody who is retreating, somebody who kind of lives alone, and perhaps this person doesn't live alone, but they may feel really lonely in their environment. So what do they wish they could say at this moment but cannot please for pile number three? What do they wish they could say but cannot for pile number three? You have the page of cups. They just want to pop up with this. As I said, they're prepared. They know what they want to say. They should not have doubted their intuition. They shouldn't have doubted this feeling that they had inside of themselves. But they keep saying, I'm so young, I didn't have any experience. We have the five of pentacles and i feel like it could be in separation and the two of you may be like living very mirrored soul paths in some ways um that could mean equal equal circumstances when it comes to commitments you could also be very sort of mirrored in your feelings as well <clears throat> because they are focused on the loss of you You have the Three of Swords. And I feel like they're still keen for more. Like if in a perfect world, that that's what it feels like. In a perfect world, we could expand this. In a perfect world, we could have a fresh start. But their decisions have sort of made their choices for them. The choices that they've made, the beds that they've made for themselves, 
um, has made the decision for them. We do have the Four of Pentacles and we have the Three of Pentacles. And we it com is combined to create the, the Seven of Pentacles, which is a lot of impatience. So there may have been even years here of separation between the two of you. And there is this emphasis on the home, emphasis on trying to protect two different arenas. It's like, I want to protect this connection, but I also want to protect my position. And that foundation, it's like you've been carried into my foundation. Um, they're showing me that scene, I say a scene, but um, that interview with Diana, Princess Diana, where she said there's three people in that marriage, that's what it feels like, that they're saying that they carried your energy with them. Even if you've been separated, it's like you still haven't left me. I've been carrying that torch with me and protecting it. But it's like they're monopolizing a lot of their energy protecting that torch, but also protecting their environment and building something practical for themselves. And that could be the reason why they can't say exactly what they want to say. Because there does seem to be this moral decision or this moral thought process when it comes to you. And this could include other people at this time as well. And that's just the natural progression of things. You know, when we move forward from our youth and into adulthood, we start to build lives. We start to invest. We start to climb mountains. And now they know that if they follow their intuition in this moment, the spark that they've kept alive, they have to face the truth of these obstacles. They have to face really harsh lessons and include other people in these lessons. And that's where they, where they hesitate. They do want to emphasize the attraction to you. It's more than physical. It was like uh, immediately when they met you, they felt something or they there was like a recognition of some kind. And mixed with the, the practicality of your, it's like something missing physically when you're not around is this wave of emotion that hits as well. You sort of represent a time period for this person. It's like you're a check mark or you represent a time period when things were easier, things were not as hard, things were, were less work. And they miss the good old days. I keep hearing that Macklemore song, the good old days. You have the seven of wands. The king of wands reversed. Fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Gemini, Virgo. And there's the empress. Nothing compares, I just heard. Nothing compares, nothing, nothing compares to what they felt perhaps in the past or what they have. It's almost like they have taken what they felt in the past and they've made it bigger and bigger and bigger. When we talk about making mountains out of molehills, that's what they've done in the positive aspects when it comes to you. And it just inflates the connection in their mind. Um, but as it inflates you and your sort of persona inflates you, it deflates their ego. Like it deflates their um, confidence sometimes because they don't feel like they can do anything about it with the Three of Swords. And they also don't feel like they're really on your frequency there. We have the Six of Wands with the Ace of Wands, and I do feel like this person is wearing really heavy masks when it comes to you even now, because that spark is still real. And they believe that you're like twin flame energy, soulmate energy, they believe that. But they could also be in a commitment at this time. There's this feeling about willing to put in work towards another chance though, being willing to put in the, the work to, for another chance. And the se seven of wands here supporting the three of wands is determination, is obstacles, yes, highlighting it and highlighting that perhaps now is not the time to combat those obstacles, but that they are recognizing the obstacles and they still want expansion. Even though they don't know what the, the future holds, that is something that does weigh upon them in this moment. They think you're gorgeous though, I will say. And again, this is something they've inflated perhaps in their mind, but they just think that you're gorgeous. The Empress is the most abundant card in the deck. And you present, you represent a temptation. She's, I'm just staring at those pomegranates on her dress. Whoops. On the floor. We have hope is like a hummingbird. This came out in pile number one as well. And you can see that this person is in a sea on this one stony perch in, a, in the middle of the sea and there's a little hummingbird that's looking down at him and the hummingbird can bridge the gap between um, bridge gaps really quickly rather in the practical realm and in the same way emotionally this person's like my mood would change like that from helplessness to victory if, if you said that you felt the same way 
although uh, again complications are still in place we do have here the lonesome gardener and i think about virgo here at the lonesome gardener there's an emphasis on october actually in this moment as well he's holding on to a pumpkin and there's the spider it's like weaving my own destiny it's like i made my decision i made my bed and now i have to lay in the in the bed that i made and there's a lot of regret in the choices that they made or to be honest with you in the lack of effort that they put in in the past back of the deck says the blessed reunion and that's what they really really want that is and there's the hummingbird here too again focusing on joy focusing on friendship abundance reunions wishing that they could have a fresh new start when I think of 20, I think of reflection and I think about trying to figure out solutions, trying to come up with solutions so we can have brand new opportunities. But they're also indicating that they would come with a moral choice or come with a choice between parties. But there's Cupid's arrow ready to strike. <clears throat> what do they wish they could say but cannot to pile number three, please? We have the starfish, Aquarius energy. And we have the swan. There's this message about feeling like they've lost you within the star energy. In the star energy, it's all about healing and, and our journey back to wholeness. And how they, ref again, reflection with the hermit and the two swans. Um, there's this aspect of spending a lot of time in deep reflection and having feeling like a piece of themselves was missing or something is missing when it comes to the lack of connection between the two of you and wondering if you mirror that same feeling i always think of the queen of swords when i see the two swans or even a swan in general i think of the queen of swords and i think about her voice being the influence her voice shedding light and that's what they're kind of wishing for that your opinion could be known um, and they pray for you in the midst of this hermit energy. They could be a very spiritual person. They, they pray for you because I think of the ego as bringing our prayers to the creator and they do pray for you. There's also an emphasis on not being brave enough when it comes to you in the past. <clears throat> what do they wish they could say to you in this moment, but cannot? I'm so attracted to you. You have no idea what you do to me. Even present day, you have no idea what this person thinks and feels when it comes to you because they're wearing such heavy masks. And on the outside of things, they look like like they look like they have a good life. But there's just a loneliness. There's a peace missing. I've been dreaming of you. <clears throat> I'm protecting this connection. I know that we're being spiritually guided. So they, they do feel a deep sense of connection with you within the sort of twin flame energy. And I've thought about surprising you with a date. And there's Cupid's arrow ready to strike. As I said, there's this aspect about decisions still on their mind in relation to you in the future. So it's like they haven't solidified their plan yet, but that's also the other job of the hermit is to start to make a plan of action, even if he feels like he has to take baby steps towards his goals. So this person could have intention towards you even today. You're so different, but that's why I love you is on the back of that deck. What do they wish that they could say that they cannot to pile number three, please? This needs to stop. The rumination, they are emphasizing healing cycles, but they haven't exactly requested closure either. I would take you home to mom, wishing that they had committed to you. The pressure is building, perhaps to communicate to you, but they have to show patience. I just saw where have you been? Even in a crowded room, I'm lonely for you. And that is the hermit energy. And I feel like they're, they're not alone. They're not alone, but they're lonely. This just doesn't feel right. The things that have happened between us, the lack of closure, the lack of movement. Oops, on the floor, we've got two. 
I know we are going to start over. And the only thing that makes me happy is you. Back of the deck says, I just desperately want to talk to you. It's like in a perfect world, they could have more, but oops, they will settle for that. They will settle for just communication. And I feel like, I feel like this person has intentions, although they don't have the confidence now to come forward. What do they wish they could say to pile three? Please, but cannot. Wedding, the situation is involving marriage or commitments. But this huge bow on the front of this divine masculine energy says that despite that, again, wearing gloves, wearing masks, they think very highly of you. They care about you quite a bit. But they're worried about healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. And this person may have come from a divorced family. And so they're really, they're really focused on not doing that perhaps to their children. Back of the deck says honeymoon though. They do wish that they could step outside of that experience and whisk you away to some place where nobody knows either one of you so that you can express yourselves freely. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number three. Advice for pile number three regarding the person. Eight of Pentacles reversed. They're really weighing their options as far as the risk worth the reward and whether or not the effort that they put in is going to be justified to, to the results that they are going to see. And there's the Eight of Swords and there's the Nine of Swords. And they're really wondering about that. They're really overthinking. They're worried. They're insecure about the whole thing. Um, and there's still an emphasis on Aquarius, still an emphasis on healing as well. So this could be a huge part of their obstacles that they're supposed to clear out. You know, this the eights are all representing mastery and strength and trying to forge through because this is just a perspective issue. All of the overthinking that they're gearing towards you, um, it's almost a habit that they're forming for themselves. In the bowl today, we have the letters T. T and H. We have a double-edged razor, so two people who perhaps feel the same way. We have peace reversed, so no closure between the two of you. Wanting more, the three of wands, but I also think about three third party with that charm, so take that as it resonates. We have the big empty heart. Leo energy and wishing to claim independence. And we have the little boy. So I think of little children, but I also think about somebody who made decisions when they were young and perhaps ill-equipped to make those decisions. Pile number three, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it does, drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. You can also check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading. But I hope that you come and visit me at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope that you have a great day.